Okay, let's put it all together. In this example, we have several different assets. We have a building. The risk is fire. In this case, we've decided that our building is worth $700,000, and if we have a fire in the building, we're expected to lose $425,000. Now, how often is this expected to occur? Well, basically, we're going to expect our building will burn down once every five years. That means that annually, we have an annualized rate of occurrence of 20%. We take that 20%, multiply it by our single lost expectancy, and we end up with an annualized loss expectancy of $85,500. Now let's back this up a little bit. If we expect to lose a building once every five years to fire, and we expect to lose $425,000 in value from that building, that means that every year we have to budget $85,500 as our loss. So if you multiply that times five, then we would have a total loss of $425,000. Look at the next line. This corresponds to what we mentioned a little bit earlier. We have a file server, and the risk is a disk crash. The file server is worth $50,000, and we estimate that if we have a disk crash with a total loss of data, we're going to lose half of our file server value. Again, once every five years, we estimate as the rate of occurrence, and so we would estimate, again, every year, $5,000 loss. I won't read the rest of the table to you, but you get the idea. Now, what we do with this is we have this ALE, Annualized Lost Expectancy. Which one out of the column looks like it is the worst loss we can incur? Once you have all the analysis done and all the calculations done, that part's simple. Stolen sensitive data is going to hit us to the tune of $126,000. That may be the first place that we go when we're looking for the right controls. Now I say maybe because we might find out that in order to control the sensitive data in question, Maybe it costs us $175,000. That's not a good control to implement. But this is the first place we look. Which one is going to hurt us the most financially?